Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss how to expose your application to the internet using the AWS Load Balancer Controller. In my previous video, we have discussed how to access our application internally in Kubernetes cluster using cluster IP. We will walk through what is AWS Load Balancer Controller, its architecture and the installation process using Helm. So, what is AWS Load Balancer Controller? So, it manages AWS Elastic Load Balancers for a Kubernetes cluster. And how it works? It actually monitors your Kubernetes ingress resources or the service resources. And based on that, it creates the appropriate Elastic Load Balancers. And the architecture would look like this. Here are the users and this is the Amazon Load Balancer. And then it reaches to your EKS cluster where all your pods are running. So the controller simplify this by generating a single IP or DNS name to point to multiple pods and services inside your cluster. This means that you don't have to manually set up and manage any elastic load balancers for your Kubernetes services. It is all handled by this load balancer controller. So to install the controller, you have two options. One is using the Helm, you can do that. And the second option is using Kubernetes manifest. So in this particular video, we will be exploring the option of installing AWS load balancer controller using Helm. So if you look at this particular site and go there, there are couple of prerequisites. So the prerequisite for installing AWS Load Balancer controller, first you need to have an EKS cluster and the second which is very important, existing IAM OIDC provider for your cluster. And what is OIDC providers? It actually enables your Kubernetes service accounts to automate, to authenticate directly with AWS using IAM. So it actually act as a bridge between Kubernetes and AWS and allow workloads running on your cluster to securely use AWS services. And in this particular example, because your AWS load balancer controller is going to create a ELB like elastic load balancer. So it uses the Kubernetes service accounts and that service account in turn make IAM call to AWS resources like in this particular example, Elastic Load Balancer. So because to set up that set to set up that process, you need to have an OIDC provider to make these authenticated API calls securely. Now we will create a OIDC provider for our cluster. So let's go to AWS console and just grab the OIDC provider URL. So here you can see open ID connector provider URL, you need that. So just copy this and then click on IAM, go to your IAM console. And here is a section called identity providers, go there and add provider. And here you have to select open ID connect and this is the provider URL. And the audience is STS Amazon AWS.com. And this is all in their instructions as well. So if you click on this, there is a instruction how to create it from the console. So I'm just following that. And you just click it and then click on add provider. So once that is done, you can see that you must assign an IAM role also to start using this provider. So just copy this and now as part of our next step, you can see that we have completed the prereq and our Kubernetes cluster have all these plugins like VPC, CNI, proxy, and core DNS. We have added all these add-ons and we have all the prerequisite on setup completely. So now the first step is you need to create an IAM role. So in this, they are using EKS CTL to, to create an IAM role, but we are using the Cube CTL and also IAM role we will be creating manually only. So they have provided the policy. So if you open this particular URL, you will get the long policy, IAM policy that 
they want us to attach to the I am role. So if you click on this, this is the big policy that they have provided. So for that first step, I go to policy and I created the policy here. So if I go there, so I already created this EKS ALB policy. To create a policy, it's a very simple step. Just click on create policy JSON and just copy paste all the stuff that was provided by the AWS documentation. So once policy is there, your next step is you need to create a role. So if I go there, so I have just clicked, I have just created this role, EKS ALB, and I have attached this particular policy to this role. And the important part is a trust relationship. So this is how the trust relationship looks like. And this is where you will provide your new, uh, new uh, cluster ID that new OIDC provider ID that we got it. So let me just grab that again. So this is my new one that I have created. So you will add a trust policy. You just replace this. Okay, so now we have added this trust policy and click on update policy. So this is our first step that we have done. And now if you look at the documentation, we created this policy and now they are using the EKS CLI to create the Kubernetes service account and the annotation, all the things which are required. And as part of this, when you run this command, it actually generate that trust policy also that I just put in our in this I am role. So that command automatically generates that. So now instead of using EKS CLI, we will be using a Kubernetes configuration. So I have created this configuration service account.yaml file and it is creating a service account with this name and it is doing the annotation like this and associated it with this the I am role. And with, this is very important because if this annotation does not happen, then Kubernetes service account won't be able to communicate to your AWS resources and it will fail with the access denied error. So this role should be have all the policies that is provided by the AWS documentation and the trust policy using OIDC provider. If those things are not proper, you will see a 401, 403 error, the access denied error. So now we'll just go to our terminal and just run the kubectl command. So this will create the service. So I have already created it. So that's why you are not able to see it. So this is the command to describe it. So kubectl describe service account AWS load balancer controller hyphen and your namespace. And here you can see that it is associated successfully with this annotations with the IAM roles that we need. So as per the documentation, we have completed this step and now the step is install AWS load balancer controller. So for that, first you need to have the Helm installed on your machine. So you can go to Helm website and install the Helm based on your operating system. Once that is done, you need to run this command and just update this. So I have already done this, so I don't need to do it again. But this is the this is the basic commands. First, you need to add the chart on your machine and then just make sure that you have the most up to date chart. So just run the up, up, ramp, repo update command. Now we will run this helm install command. So here you can see helm install. This is the name and this is the chart that it is using and you are providing the namespace where you want to install it and then you are setting your cluster name. We have said we don't want to create a service account because we already created it. You, se you set the region, your VPC ID and the service account name that you have created in the previous uh, previously. So just copy this command and go to your terminal. And here you just copy this and just run this. Ignore this error. This is specific for my Mac OS, but it is not impacting doing any Helm deployment. So 
and here you can see that it has deployed successfully AWS load balancer controller installed successfully so generally when you run this command it takes a little bit of time before your deployment is successful so just wait so because of that you just run this command where you are just running kubectl get deployments your namespace and this is the deployment name so just run this and here you can see available so as soon as you see available it means the deployment is successful so now you have installed the load balancer controller now you are ready to create a ingress resource the ingress resource so that you can communicate so that it will create a load balancer for you and you can access your application on internet or externally so if even if you look at the documentations we have deployed this you verify that controller is installed and now you are ready to create your ingress resources before you create an ingress resources i just wanted to mention whatever vpc you have so if i go to your vpc ensure that your public subnet is specifically because we are creating right now public subnet so minimum of your two public subnets should have these tags which is Kubernetes input output role ELB1. So, however, public subnets you have, just ensure that they have these tags. If not, then just add it. So, let me just add to one of them. So, this is how it is. Oh, it already have it. Here is one more public subnet. Because when you add this tag, then Kubernetes load balancer controller actually find out that yes i can use these subnets to create a load balancer elastic load balancer so because of that reason these tags are important and if you don't put those tags then you will see the error that i will show you how those errors look like so now just go to your terminal and i wanted to show you my ingress.yaml file as well so this is how my ingress looks like so here you can see the namespace i have provided the name and the annotation so i wanted to have the internet facing uh, elb and the target type is ip you have lot of options there but this is very basic example so i'm just using that and the ingress class name is alb which is application load balancer and these are some rules that you provide so basically just slash anything as soon as you open your load balancer DNS name you should be able to access see the nginx home page so this is my simple ingress.yaml file just go there and just run it so you can see that it has created this and now if I look at this yeah so here you can see that you do kubectl get ingress hyphen a and this is the address so if you are seeing this it means it is working successfully and also you can actually run or you can check the kubectl get events also to check if there are any issues but for now there are no issues so this is just uh, load balancer the address that it has created now if you go to your aws console and look for this load balancer you would you will see that it is provisioning so let me just go there yeah so here you can see that this particular load balancer is provisioning and once the provision is successful and this is the dns name that it has uh, that you should be able to use it and access it on the browser and just one more thing that i wanted to tell you that it automatically creates the security groups also when you uh, run this ingress object and if you look at the security group you can see the access also that it provides so, so this is one traffic test so there is no inbound and this is the another one that it has created and here you can see the outbound range 80 so anybody can just access it on the browser once they have this dns name now you can see that load balancer status is active and now you can click on this get the dns name from here 
and copy it on your browser it is not secure because we have not added any ssl or any certificate so just ensure that your url is using http and you should be able to see this welcome to nginx page and just wanted to say one more thing <clears throat> when you create this kubernetes ingress resource make sure that you have already created or expose your uh, services or pods using cluster ip that we have seen in the previous video to create a kubernetes service which is the default that cluster ip if you don't have that kubernetes service object this will not work and here when there is a two rule sections you won't be able to see that it has created a target group and here you can see that it has created everything in an automated way i have not set up any rules or any target groups uh, inside this load balancer so this is how it works just wanted to tell you one more thing when you delete your eks cluster after all your testing or when you are done with your pocs then if you want to destroy it this load balancer is not get deleted in an automated way when you delete the eks cluster so for that you actually go to your kubectl command and run so to delete that you have to run the kubectl command and delete your ingress and just put your name and provide the namespace name so this is how you can delete the load balancer otherwise it will keep running and you will see the prices of it